many of us talk about healing. I want healing, I'm going for healing, I yearn for healing, but many of us don't really question what that means. Like what is healing? And what's really going on in our bodies, in our minds, in our energy bodies, and on a soul level when we are actually doing healing work. And so today I'm going to be discussing this topic with a dear friend and colleague, co-teacher of mine, Minka DeVos. Um, and she has been teaching the Taoist arts for over 30 years. She's truly, truly a master and she is a master healer. So I'd like to welcome <laughs> Welcome. Here. Yeah, oh, I'm so happy to be talking about this topic with you, especially having been working at your side so many years and sealing the effect power of the healing work that you do thank you very much so so honored to be by your side <laughs> so minka i thought we can really just dive into this question this topic what is healing so how would you def define healing i would define healing as a liberation of trapped energy that wants to be freed uh, mm -hmm. so we can return back to our true nature that we can come back to love return to love Mm. And uh, the, a lot of that trapped energy is like beliefs and negativity and negative emotions and patterns that could be so conditioned from the past and even our ancestral past. Right. So like ancestral patterns that are cutting off energy can be passed down to us. And so we take on those contractions or pains or suffering, I suppose. They are like they're revealing themselves in this life to be healed. Right. They're asking, please, please heal me. Please liberate me, please. <laughs> so then our, would you say our suffering or our pain is like a call, is like a cry for help? Yes, cry Just... for help. And and often our spirit is is listening, and but often our busy mind is not hearing it. And mm -hmm. so if it comes from the spirit, these things, it can download into the energy where we'll start to feel it subtly and then it can download itself into physical ailments mm -hmm. it's to catch it when it's in the energy. Right. It's so we, we can listen quietly. We can hear it. Help me. <laughs> right. So if we're actually meditating and listening, then we can hear things like in the ether and start healing them. But if we don't hear, they're going to kind of come down into more physical matter and then start screaming in our bodies sometimes yes or practice like uh clearing ancestral knots from shamanic chinese medicine is preventative mm -hmm. you, you clear these remnants of like a residue of lifetimes you're, so you're, an ancestral knot is could you just define that like for people an that ancestral knot is is uh, emotions that is trapped that's not bonded in unconditional love Right. It's not based in integrity. Uh, mm -hmm. It has gotten distorted. Mm -hmm. That gets mm -hmm. knotted together. So it actually needs to be consciously unraveled. Mm -hmm. So how do I con consciously, consciously unravel this is shining the light of your consciousness into it and love, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And then... Hide. It wants to hide, but it's that, that grandmotherly, divine motherly compassion that will actually start to unravel it. So that hiding is like kind of shame. Like often there, there are things that we don't want the world to know about ourselves or we're shamed of, or, but you're saying those are the very things we need to shine consciousness and love towards for our healing. Yes. Or it can be like fears that you're just kind of born with. Mm -hmm. Fears around sex that you don't even consciously where where did it come from mm -hmm. and you might recognize it in your parents or you right. might recognize it in your grandparents and say okay this is coming from a deeper place mm -hmm. like just present life yeah. yeah so then i guess i like how you said these things are calling us like please heal me so like I, this reminds me of that shamanic concept that what we heal what we are choosing to heal we're healing for seven generations behind us but also, of course, for the generations yet to come. Yes. So our intention is to liberate all our relations, past, present, and future time. Mm -hmm. And it's very noble work, and it frees up family lines. And what happens to the energy? So you said there's, like, energy that's trapped. 
um, and cut off from consciousness or cut off from love and then and then when there's healing what happens with that energy um, we, 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 we send it into the earth because the earth is a big compost pit that tr naturally transforms human emotion mm -hmm. and actually feeds the earth if we let it go we surrender that heavy chi yeah. into the earth yeah mm -hmm. so we send it into the earth we send it also through our breath through sound uh into the space into the quantum field uh, for the divine light or divine presence uh to transform mm -hmm. so another another healing practice that you do is working with emotions right that i think i think a lot of people when i think about why people come to tantra or to do taoist work i think a lot of times it's, it's about emotions that are bothering people that are affecting their lives right there are people who are overcome by fear or anxiety or depression or anger or rage or you know and it can really um get in the way of enjoyment of life and peace of course so could you maybe d just uh, tell us what emotional alchemy is? Yes. Well, first thing we don't, we think, oh, these emotions just arise. But where do they actually arise from? The Taoists did lots of investigation inside, and that they say it's coming from our organs, our internal organs. And we have five vital organs, so we have five different nuances of emotional energy that can arise within us. So, for example, when the kidneys are contracted with shock, trauma, or fear, it freezes up our sexual energy. So mm -hmm. it's not flowing well. It just gets <gasps> shut down so quickly because it's in the kidneys is stored the fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we work with releasing, inventing the fear from the kidneys, we free up more sexual energy to flow from the kidneys into the rest of the body. Mm. Uh, so with the healing sounds, we're sending out this cold energy from our kidneys. We're sending out the fear. And we don't even need to name where it came from. Just the energy itself will gradually peel off layer upon layer upon layer of chronic trauma. Mm. It's gentle, but it's very potent in yeah. regular yeah. practice. Right, and often the gentle healings are the ones that, that are very effective with mm -hmm. trauma, especially because you don't want to re traumatize the body, right? So just want yeah. to. Yeah. Be able to unpeel all the frozen energy and the contractions and. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. anger, for example, anger, if it gets uh, suppressed in the liver, then it, it tends to get really tight and it's like uh, walking on landmines and then just something that will explode it. Uh, but it takes a lot of energy to push it down. Mm -hmm. And the liver is the energy of ascending energy. It's the charge of arousal, excitement. Uh, vision, creativity. So if it's all locked up and pushing down that resentment and rage, you you have less energy for sexuality, for sensuality, for connecting with love. Mm -hmm. I love how you connect these emotions with sexuality and the way sexual energy flows, because I think so many people don't think about that. And people want a more liberated sexuality to feel more sexy and more alive. And many people don't even notice the the effect of their emotions on their sexuality. That, that fear can freeze it up, and anger can can start battling against our own passion. And mm -hmm. you know, that actually, it's so important to go underneath the sexual energy to the emotional energy uh, in order to to make a healthy sexual energy. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and depression, you know, with, it, with the posture, you just all sunken and curled down. Mm -hmm. You don't feel very sexy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, you just want to hide in a hole. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How to pull yourself out of it. That's that's the thing. How do we pull ourselves? Out? And this is day, this is practice. The yeah. practice we just send it out with our intention mm -hmm. and our attitude as well, because often these emotions had a message for us or a way of coping so we do send send release it with gratitude mm 
Mm -hmm. And we reprogram it right away. So this is what's really wonderful mm -hmm. about the Taoist practices. When you release a low frequency energy, you reprogram with high frequency energy right away. So the old patterns don't creep back in. Again, mm -hmm. you have replaced it with a, a stronger light field. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love it. So in the in the Tantric Healing Symposium, you're going to be offering two different classes on both of these topics, right? So the emotional alchemy and emotional healing class. And it will be practices that people can do with you. And then, as you say, have turn into a daily practice. Mm -hmm. and yes. Six Healing Sounds is a very potent, very effective practice and it's really the foundation of down tetric art it's one of the foundational practices and we use those sounds in many different ways and i'll be applying them with ancestral knot clearing so then the ancestral knot clearing is an actual healing session right it's normally yes. given from a, a shaman would like give that healing to someone but you're you're gonna mm -hmm. share it that people can do it to themselves within the energy field that you create with them online you, you become your own shaman yeah, You're using the sounds yourself, beaming it into your own body, mm -hmm. and we'll use some strong prescription sounds as well that are stronger than the six healing sounds, mm -hmm. like a deep, deep cleansing mm -hmm. of the emotional body. Wow, so this is going to help people to clear ancestral patterns that uh, might have been passed down for generations. Yes, and Just you wonder where, where is those? Where are those ancestors? Are they buried in the ground somewhere? The Dao say, no, they are inside of you. They're in your living in your bones. They're living in your DNA. Mm. And in this session, they're living in your breathing. Mm. Mm -hmm. So your male and female ancestors are sitting in your lungs. Yeah. Maybe we're having a big global uh, ancestral healing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we're not, we should be, Minko. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you are on the <laughs> everybody clearing their ancestral chi out of their lungs maybe that's yeah. what this means <laughs> yeah, well it's the time of a shift you know into that new age a new energy new light coming in yeah the planet's definitely up to something oh <laughs> uh, well thank you so much for sharing minka it's just so wonderful to talk about this topic and yes. and to have you you know so clearly explain everything and and talk about the the amazing spiritual healing journey that we're all on. So, thank you I so much. This symposium this always flows so well. Mm -hmm. And with this sharing circles, everyone gets a chance to speak out from their own experience. And yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoy it too. <laughs> it's my pleasure. And thank you for being part of it. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you.